beautiful in April. So today we're gonna be making this gorgeous outdoor sofa that um, also can be called actually a sectional outdoor sofa. I mean, you choose. Uh, yeah, because there's three parts. This is like the ottoman that you can move. This is like the corner unit. <laughs> Thank you, Sia. Okay, so this sofa consists of three parts. The first one is this ottoman that you can move around. Another one is this like corner unit. And the third part is uh, this one-sided Loves it. So, without further ado, let's start building! Before we start making this outdoor sofa, I would like to say a few words about lumber. So, I used a regular pine and I intend to keep this uh, sofa in the screened-in porch and it's not going to get exposed to the elements like too much. Another thing that I would like to mention is that construction lumber that comes in 2x4s has rounded edges and there's nothing wrong with it, but if you aim for a more professional custom look of the furniture, you need to reap these rounded sizes. Basically, kind of trim them off on your table saw and then send it very, very well. That part will probably take you a while, not probably, definitely will take you a while, but it's so much worth in the end. Just trust me on that part. Here's how the untreated wood lumber looks like, and this is the final result, you know, like when you actually start assembling it. I wanted to show you real quickly the difference between the sanded and the between the straight edges and not, so this one, uh, you see, I didn't do anything. This is like how you buy wood from the store. And this is what happens if you put a little bit of extra work on it, but it definitely makes a huge difference in your furniture build. So let's build this sofa step by step. Step one would be to cut and assemble the armrest the tallest armrest for the sofa. And as usual, you can find all the plans and all the measurements and the directions how to build it and more information on my blog. So visit it, I'm gonna leave you the link below. There's probably a lot of ways to assemble the sofa, but I started with building the sides first. To make an armrest for the sofa, I just cut it all the pieces as per the plan and uh, I attached them with the screws. So I started using screws to assemble it and since I realized that I don't have pocket hole screws with me, yeah, the thing is that you can use either that or you can use a crack jack. So I kind of find using a crack jack is a lot easier because and uh, also the screws are hidden so it looks nicer, but uh, if you use regular screws, you'll have to go through an extra step of using a filler later. So it's totally up to you if you decide to use screws or assemble it with a crack jig. Just make sure that whatever you choose, you choose galvanized screws because it's gonna be outside and you don't want it to, to get rusty over time. When you start building this frame, you need to add a connecting two x four board between. And this is basically where the seat will be. It's gonna determine the height of the seat. So this outdoor sofa is like 12 inch tall from the floor. Add the two by two under the armrest and I used regular screws and wood glue to do that. And I did it from the bottom so it's not visible on the outside. Also, if you decide to use a crack jig, you absolutely need to have, you actually must have this uh, clamp. It's a crack jig clamp, it's a right angle clamp, and I'm gonna leave you the link below because it's such a lifesaver and it makes this job so much easier. Because as you can see, I switched later to using crack jig for most of the project. Step number two, it would be to cut and assemble another side, the shorter one, where it will connect with the corner piece. Just cut your wood as per instructions that I have on my blog and at this point you can see that I started using the crack jig and found it so much more convenient, but again, it's totally up to you. And by the way, do not forget in either of the steps to use wood glue to make the connection super strong because if you don't add the glue, a lot of things can go wrong basically. So that's gonna look something like this and uh, now we're gonna take it upstairs because it's gonna be easier to assemble it there. Step three would be to connect the sides with supports. So you need to take another two by fours and then uh, this part will solely depends on the size of your cushion. This is why it's so important to get the cushions before this build so you can have them on hand and kind of measure like what it look like. My cushions are 24 by 24 inches, pretty standard from uh, Home Depot. And uh, so the width of the couch was 48 inches all together. I used the crack jig and made pocket holes and it was a bit jittery attaching it since I was so worried it would cross the other screws on the other side but it all went so well so phew, well done. 
For the back piece, just like flip the sofa over and attach it from the inside to avoid the screws being visible. Step number four, cut two by twos and um, add it on the sides of the couch. This will serve as a support for slats for the cushions. And make sure that those supports are a bit longer than the cushion depth, so uh, you'll be able to attach the back to it later. If you don't have two by twos, you can also rip the two by fours to make two by twos, but um, yeah, it's totally up to you. And I didn't buy an extra two by twos. I just used the scrap wood that I had after I disassembled like the Montessori bed that I had before. And uh, I had this wood hanging around. So finally I found something where I can use it for. Use wood glue, of course, and screws to attach it. And then cut a two by four and uh, attach it in the middle. Uh, you can use pocket holes as well to attach that, so it's not going to be visible from the outside. But it uh, doesn't really matter because there's going to be slats on the top and um, yeah, it's all going to be covered, all the holes. So here comes step number five, add the slats. For the slats, uh, you can use pretty much any wood. And again, I had the leftover wood from uh, my Montessori bed and it was mostly two by threes and two by fours. So I cut the slats to sides and attached with the screws to the two by two support. Step number six would be to cut and attach the back. And for the back, I used two by threes and um, I just like cut them to size again and made pocket holes in the shorter boards and attach them to the longer ones. After I was done, I also added two by fours in the middle for a better support and for a more comfortable situation. Attach the back from the bottom using galvanized screws. Hey, I just finished cutting all the parts for the corner unit and um, not the oldie parts, but the handles for the corner unit. And yeah, here it is, I'm gonna send it. And that's gonna take some time, but um, so far looking good. And then comes step seven, sand and apply timber oil. But yes, let's talk about this a bit later because I still wanna show you how to make the corner unit. To make the corner unit is super easy. And if you already finished this one armed sofa, then you basically on a good track to complete this uh, whole sofa. You'll need to make one side exactly the same as the first side on the one armed sofa and uh, then you need to make another smaller side. You basically make an exact copy of this one armed sofa, but you make it smaller. As I already said before, you can find it all in my plans where I wrote down everything step by step how to make it. I just like wanted to tell you that, uh, yeah, when you start making the corner unit after you already made the sofa and you already know what you're doing, it's just gonna go so much faster at at least it went for me because you don't have to measure it all and you can just um, continue going like quite quickly so uh, do exact same steps as we did with the one arm sofa for this corner unit and basically yeah make it like sort of a one armed chair <laughs> as you can call yeah, i brought it over to the patio and now i'm just gonna assemble these two sides uh attach them together with this uh boards and uh, yeah the corner unit is gonna be done almost and of course when you're making it you know like use as many clamps as you can if you're doing it by yourself if you have some help from someone else that would be great because to hold a piece or something so but i did it by myself and um yeah clamps were my best friends I was actually so happy that I had this extra wood in hand that I could use for the slat supports um, from the Montessori bed that I had before because the wood is so expensive and you don't really care about like what's gonna go under the cushions so I'm very happy uh, that I could use that so think outside of the box and think what you could reuse and if you have any scrap wood maybe use not two by threes or use one by threes because they're quite cheaper to buy and it's gonna save you a lot on the cost of this couch but if you're gonna get one by threes instead of two by threes, just make sure that you adjust the supports on the sides. So it's gonna be flush with the top. And when you put the uh, cushion on the top, it's just gonna be flush. Yay! Then you need to build the ottoman. If you already finished the one arm sofa and the corner unit, I mean, to make the ottoman is gonna be 
just a breeze. Look up the dimensions on the block and just like build one ottoman that's gonna be perfect for your cushion. Yeah, which mine was like super square and it was just 24 by 24 inches. Easy peasy. Did this exactly same things as I did with the other units and um, yeah, the couch was ready. And then the fun part started because I had to seal this couch and I started sealing it and I got this what I thought like a beautiful cedar transparent timber oil and you know what it kind of looks beautiful on cedar but it did not look beautiful on my pine so we're gonna try this new color clear stain oh shoot <gasps> okay this is my new rock oh no okay fast Oh my god, that was like my favorite towel! Shoot! Okay, um, I guess I'm gonna try it a bit later. Damn it! <laughs> wow, and it started raining. Okay, towel's ruined. The rug is ruined. What can I do to save the rug? Okay, I'm gonna put the... I guess this can happen too. Yep, my beautiful rug <laughs> is just <laughs> got ruined. <laughs> okay, I decided that I'm dealing with the with the rug later. I mean, not really much I can do right now, anyways. But so I tried the clear coat, and look at this. I think it looks so much more pretty. Look at this. So much prettier than uh, the orange one. Yes, this is the coat I'm going for. This one, not the orange one. I enjoyed this outdoor sofa so much. I love it. I mean, I really hope that you like it too. I really hope that you learned how to make one for yourself. And if you haven't, visit my blog. I have step-by-step -step instructions with way more details. I have drawn up plans step by step like which planks goes after which so yes it's so easy to make and uh, yeah if i could make it you can totally make it too thank you so much for watching guys really appreciate your time and um, yes i hope to see you next week we're gonna be doing this beautiful patio reveal so stay tuned i'll see you next week bye